Hello and welcome back. I'm Tyler Rudlin, and in this week's episode of the Brush Sauce Theater, I'd like to invite you all to join my friend Jess and I as we talk about our first experience at the Spectrum Art Fantastic Live Convention. All right, everyone, on this episode of the Brush Sauce Theater, I'm here with my good friend Jessica, and we're going to be talking about our first experience going to, what is it, Spectrum Arts, Spectrum Art Fantastic? Fantastic Art Live. Yes, mm -hmm. it was a recent convention in Kansas City, Missouri. We were both our first time attendees uh, or, or tabling there, so we wanted to talk about our experience, because I know before that, leading up to it, I know at least on my end, I was really nervous and, I was super nervous yes, too. <laughs> and you were as well. We didn't know what to expect if we prepared right. It, it was a nerve wracking. It can be a very nerve wracking experience for someone that's that's creative like us. That you know, is in our office or in our studio. In your case, all day long in isolation, we're basically putting ourselves up on the chopping block and getting out into the public. And yeah, it is a great experience, I'd say. Yeah, and I think I, I'm really glad that we decided to go it together the first time because. It wasn't quite as scary when you know yes. you have someone there that's on your side, like <laughs> there to help, you know. And I've learned too that people that do this regularly, they, they kind of pawn off or they, they cheaply hire booth attendants to help them run their booth. If they have a bigger setup or something, if they need a bathroom break, if they need food, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so they would maybe, hey, I'll give you a few prints. You want to watch my stuff for like a little while? I was listening to some other podcasts and that's that's a pr fairly common thing. So I guess my takeaway from this is if, if it's your first trip and you want to get in it, but you're a little hesitant on the cost or just nervousness in general, share a table with somebody. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. what we did. It, it ended up working out even better than that because the person next to us wasn't there and I could just move all my stuff onto yeah, the, the... We got the best of both worlds. We yeah. split the cost and then we ended up getting a table right next to ours for free. So. Yes. We each ended up with our own table and, and a booth party anyways. The base table that we had was $250. It was on the second floor. It was kind of a little out of the way. I mean, there's still lots of artists there, but it, the layout of it was weird. And the, I guess the main tables on the main floor, those were $350 apiece, which mm -hmm. from what? Hmm? The next year, I'm planning to, to go downstairs and get a booth for $350. Yeah. You're going big. <laughs> yeah. I started small now I'm gonna I'm gonna go for the gold and from what I heard too the, the price of this convention is even less than a lot of other ones some mm -hmm. places can run five to a thousand dollars a table yeah I was looking at New York Comic Con in October and the tables are 500 there so that's that's and, tough that's what, scary. what of what of a Luxicon in in October how much does that one run now Yes, I can't remember. I paid for it in January. Okay. Um, it's probably a little more, I'm guessing. It was, I, I want to say it was comparable to mm -hmm. um, Spectrum. It wasn't a lot more or less, so somewhere near 250 <laughs> Yeah, it, so it, it, it can be a little a lot. Some artists make back their tables, some don't. It, you'll have to feel things out. I would definitely recommend trying to visit a convention before you want to do a booth or a table there so you can feel it out. So you're not going completely although, in blind, right? Although, to be fair, I, um, neither of us had gone to Spectrum before. And we did a table, and it was a great experience. So It, it was a good a good experience overall. <laughs> I, my, my experience at this the convention for this first time w was overall pretty good. Uh, I would divide it even up into two parts. You get the first part is doing the show all day from, I think, 10 to about 5. And then after that, from five to whenever you crash, is the socializing aspect where you got to mingle with other artists. And you, you know, you you socialize. You go to the bars. You get drinks. You make your connections. You can bring your portfolio. Show people around. You know, everyone's a lot easier going after they've had a few in them. And it's it's a completely different dynamic than interacting with, uh, you know, I guess the general public. Yeah, I I actually found that a little more nerve wracking. Like it the whole thing was fun. Like I enjoyed the whole thing immensely. Um, and it was incredibly encouraging, but I found like it was more of the after hours things where the social anxiety kicked in and there were like people that I would like to talk to or introduce myself to or say hi. And then I would talk myself out of it because I would see them like already like invested in conversation with people that they seem to know. And then there's the whole like, 
Hi, I'm a complete stranger from the internet. There may have been one point on the first night, the Friday night, I walked a little late into the bar that the the convention kind of rented out, and like James Gurney is just like chilling in the corner, <laughs> having a cocktail. Or something. I was like, oh gosh, you know, I was nerve. <laughs> it got me all in butterflies. It's it's pretty funny being. Uh, I would say my experience as my first one on this level. I was definitely got a got a case of the starstruck. Like I'm yeah. just looking over and there's these illustration and painting like icons all around. And you're like, eh, you know, you melt. <laughs> Next yeah. year I go back, I'll have my head a little higher up and I won't be like, you don't have to pick me up off the floor, I would say. So it's good to get that out of your system, I would say, with your nerves. I think so. I think next year it won't be quite as intimidating, like mm-hmm. just being around these people that you've admired for years and looked up to and learned from. Um, so... Um, hopefully next year I'll be a little more outgoing and social. Oh, you're but, fine. You're fine. <laughs> it was it was still great, and I still had some great conversations with some great people. Mm-hmm. Sometimes not even like like um, I told you, Forrest Rogers came over to my table and was talking to me, and I I didn't even recognize her. And I'd had like a, a several minute conversation with her before I looked down at her name tag and realized who she was. Then then the ah uh, starstruck stuck in. But yeah, it's, fu- <laughs> like, it's funny how that works. It really yeah. is. I had yeah. some, some of the best experiences at this were in the in the the after hours with the socializing. I think that's that's I think is a large draw for the artists on this convention because it is a lot smaller, and I got the vibe that everybody kind of knew everybody already too. And yeah, it, it would definitely be a lot easier returning because then there'll be a lot more familiar faces. I might not know everybody by name, but I I friended about thirty to forty new Facebook friends that night, and at least I can <laughs> start a conversation. Hey, I remember you from last year, and say what's up. You don't have to tell me you don't know, remember their name necessarily, but it was a good experience. I liked it. Yeah, yeah, and I think too, like there were a lot of people that I wanted to talk to as well that I knew from online, um, but it was like there was just such a whirlwind of people and events and. I like I feel like I don't know next year hopefully I'm better at like finding time to set aside to talk to like the people that I want to talk to and get to know them a little better and and, and you did all right sales how did you do with sale wise you don't have to get into specifics but <laughs> was it good was it bad was it all right I feel like I did really good um I went there with the expectation of maybe I won't sell anything maybe I won't make any money like Mm-hmm. And I was okay with that because I was. This is my first show, and also, you know, I'm not established in the industry. Like, I I haven't done a bunch of freelance jobs. Like, I've never really tried to sell my work or put my work out there for people. So this was kind of my first attempt at that, and I I made back pretty much the cost of my travel and the table and all that stuff. And um from what i understand that was actually pretty good a lot of people had trouble doing that so i feel like it was it was definitely worth it um yeah i, I want to toss a number out there for the hell of it I, since i came with a very low print run i split the cost of the table with you i split the cost of a hotel with my friend of course we had to fly out there i was halfway across the country i would say with all the prints and the the setup and everything that i bought and the cost of the trip and, and including food lodging and the drinks and stuff i would say i i mean i don't have a solid number but i'd say it was around 1500 to 2000 dollars that i spent on that trip as a whole and i made back i would say a fraction of that in actual sales but i'm i'm fine with that uh it was mm-hmm. more or less an experience that i think was good to, for me to have i there was a lot of takeaways i had from that which maybe i could I'll touch upon later but I, it was a good experience overall, not necessarily for, for sales. I know it, it, Spectrum itself has a had a traffic, a public traffic around 1,500 to 2,000 people, again, with itself. Uh, and I guess it's small for convention numbers. Yeah, and from what I understand, too, is, you know, they're still trying to establish, like, a good location and time of year and all that sort of stuff, which has made it a little smaller um, for now. But I don't think that that's going to stay that mm-hmm. way. I feel like... I feel like Spectrum is such an incredible thing in and of itself. The the book, the awards, the community, the just I, I don't know how like the intangible quality of Spectrum is such a fantastic thing that I mm-hmm. think that once the logistics become more stable, that the rest of it will grow along with it. Um, yeah. So I don't know. 
<laughs> I'm optimistic. <laughs> so I would I would say overall the atmosphere though at the convention is very good. Very people are very nice. They're friendly and welcoming. And if you have questions, you can almost talk to anybody. They'll they'll show you the ropes. They'll give you tips if you need tips. I was asking lots of people, hey, what do you think about this or that in regards to setups? And yeah, people are generally really open to things, and I mm -hmm. and I like that a lot. Yeah. Uh, so how how was your setup? Did you did you go crazy with it? Did you did you build your own? Did you ship it? Did you drive yep. it? <laughs> I I built my own and I drove it down. It was um it was supposed to be a seventeen hour drive. It turned into a twenty and some hour drive, which was terrible. Um, <laughs> as a tan. <laughs> I do not plan to drive 20 hours again to get to Spectrum. I have to find a way to fly and ship my stuff out there because that was, it was two days there of driving and two days back of driving. So That's it was over half a week, like almost a work week worth of days that I lost just to driving. And that, that yeah. I think was the worst part of the experience. Yeah, um, definitely. But as for my display, it went fantastic. I built my own because I had this like in idea in my mind of what I wanted it to look like, and I couldn't find anything that looked like what I wanted. And I thought, you know, to just go ahead and throw myself into it, create something that I feel like best presents what I want to present. And I, I used a lot of like small decorative frames for my smaller prints, and um, it just. I got so much positive feedback. Like people loved my display. I had so many people just stop and say, your display is incredible. I love it. It looks fantastic. Um, and it actually, cause I had built it to try and maximize also the space. Cause I only had half a table or I thought Originally. I only had half a table. So I tried to maximize the space that I could use with half a table and then um, ended up getting the rest of the table. And so I think that there were some logistical problems that came about when I had that extra space that I hadn't anticipated. Like I didn't, I didn't have a way to display my big prints, the 12 by 18s, which I hadn't thought that I would have space to display them anyways. Mm -hmm. So I hadn't bothered solving that problem. So I think in the future I'll get a nice portfolio book that I can open up and flip through. Um, I think one of the main things that I screwed up was my signs like I didn't have clear signs or pricing mm -hmm. and I had tried to do this thing where I printed out these little prices to put next to things that were all like you know matched everything it looked really pretty but they printed twice as small That's okay. as I had printed <laughs> and nobody could read them I think someone called them like little dollhouse signs mm -hmm. and um I also at some point realized that having them like scattered around wasn't helpful either. And I think in the future I'll have like one clear sign that had all the prices on it. Mm -hmm. That's what I did. I printed out uh, I think a four by six typical photo size uh, image with a price list. And I, I just put that right in a picture frame on the front of my table um, and didn't seem to have any problems with it. It was really simple. It wasn't anything good looking, but uh, I think it got the job done. And, yeah. And Sometimes just... that's what you need. <laughs> And I compare my experience with what I brought versus what you did. I, I brought a lot less. I I flew out there. So I fit my whole entire setup into one spare suitcase, which was one of the most challenging things I've ever done. I did <laughs> six different images at three different sizes. I did 15 of each of those. So mm -hmm. you could do the math if anyone is interested in figuring out how many total prints that was. But uh, it wasn't bad. I what was it? we use cat print to print this thing the yeah, online yeah. which was very good they were pretty quick pr reasonably priced they give you a proof uh, really good stuff so I nothing bad to say about that and, and I bought I purchased a uh, bag uh, not so bags but uh, sleeve protectors yeah. to put them in I would sell them in those uh, yeah. some people buy bags as well so you can put them all in and if you have a lot of extra business cards to run, it's even better to put them in with every sale so people know how to find you if they want to get more work. It was something yeah. I didn't do, but that was something I learned. <laughs> so that's lesson learned. Also, because I was selling, um, I made those prints, like the four by six and five by seven prints, and then I put them in like sets of five or six into envelopes, and I was selling them as packs with like the wax seal with my, my little octopus logo mm -hmm. and those did really well people really liked those um and actually i i spent a decent chunk of change on the the seal stamper with my logo um which i thought was a frivolous expense but it actually ended up being one of the best investments that i made because mm -hmm. people 
really, really loved it. So, um, but one of the mistakes I made with those is I went and I, I got a portfolio review from um, Zoe Robinson and then I went to give her one of them and I had forgotten my business card. So I, I gave her the envelope and she said, oh, don't worry, your business card's in the envelope, right? And I'm like, <laughs> no. no. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Of course it's not. <laughs> so that that will be rectified um, for the future. So, so let's talk about that for maybe young and aspiring artists or, or newcomers that are interested about that sort of thing. There there was four art directors, I believe, from two publishing companies at this event, which uh, I've only been to CTNX, which is a little low compared to that. But uh, it seems like when art directors are there, they're not necessarily there to hire you on the spot or anything, but they're there to kind of promote their company. And the, yes, they do lots of portfolio reviews. They were isolated in a lounge. There was no sign up. You had to wait in line. I'm hearing some people waited up to two hours to get in front of them. Uh, but they would just give you like, you know, would you basically work well with their publishing company? Uh, so uh, art directors from them will let you know what they they'll give you a, an opinion based off the type of work that they do, whether or not you'd be a good fit. So learn. To, you, I think some advice I would give is just to be able to filter the feedback you get from anybody when you're going to yeah. these things, yeah. because it's it's always biased towards whatever mm -hmm. um, they specialize in, um, which is not to say like some like there's still advice they could give you that is still solid or, or true, but just keep in the back of your mind that it, it's always geared towards a certain specialty. Um, and like, I remember I, it actually wasn't at Spectrum, but at a LuxCon, I had a, a portfolio review with Lauren Pinapinto and um, I, I'm really interested in books and working in book covers, but I come from a fine art background of like more classical style art. And when she looked at my portfolio, the first thing she said to me is, why do you want to do book covers? These don't look like book covers. They look mm -hmm. like interior illustrations or something you would hang on a wall. And up until that moment, it had never really occurred to me that they look different. Yeah, um, very different so. in design and in <laughs> purpose. Yeah, yeah. And she still gave me some excellent advice, which I was able to use to improve some pieces. But it, it just it, there was a focus that she had towards my work that I hadn't even really thought in that direction before. Um, mm -hmm. So good to know. Yeah. And we, we were there. We, 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 I think you and I both, you know, at, at the age that we are, which we won't say online, we have, <laughs> you know, anywhere from 10 to 15 years of experience painting. And you and mm -hmm. I had fun going there with people and veterans that had like 40 to 50 years of experience. And we were getting our stuff critiqued and looked at by them. And then I, I, I did about, five to 10 portfolio reviews of younger guys coming up to me and getting them. So it's this continuous cycle and train that mm -hmm. of, of, you know, professionals helping other professionals, helping kind of the, 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 the up and comers is really and cool. And it's in a great environment. I think it works particularly well on this show because uh, it was kind of slow. The traffic was low. And I would mm -hmm. say that's something to be a little more mindful of, you know, during a busier show. I, I would say if, <laughs> if you're, going to hustle someone for a portfolio review, which, which is fine, but maybe if it do that before or after or during times when they are slow, because you'll be costing that you'll be costing box. that artist some sales. Do that at the mm -hmm. after events. Or if you if you kinda even get one, buy a low low end print off them as a way to tipping that artist, saying mm -hmm. thank you. I think yeah, that'd be a nice absolutely. respectful gesture as well. Um, yeah, I, I would agree with that. I think that that's one of the things that I really loved about Spectrum is I felt like there was this very like like open community, which in a lot of other art fields, I don't think that it's always the case, but I yeah. feel like especially with the sci-fi fantasy artists and at Spectrum, it really came out where like everyone was there to learn and teach from each other. Like everyone was there to encourage each other, push mm -hmm. each other forward, give each other advice, share knowledge. Like there was, there was no cattiness or competitiveness, which is just, it's so refreshing. It like refreshing. it's just, no one, it, it's completely separate from the way we live as artists or creatives on the social medias where it's like, oh my God, I got to get 10 likes on this image or, you know, not, you know, nobody shared this. It, it's completely drama free, which I really mm -hmm. liked. It, it brought things back to a time, you know, when, when I was going up and through things and they just more one-on-one -on -one, uh, more person-to-person -person interacting rather than you know everyone's just separate you know stepping around on phones and no one's interacting with each <laughs> other you know it i think it was such a great environment in regards to that mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah also, 
The other thing that it's pretty unique to Spectrum is they have an award ceremony on Saturday night, which ran about two hours, which is basically like the Grammys and Emmys for for <laughs> fantasy and sci-fi illustrators. It was a fantastic spectacle. They had a comedian doing bits in between sets. They had some perf- live performers. It was really awesome. And then, of course, the, the Spectrum gave their nominees and their awards, which are you know displayed each year in their book. So I guess to even be in that, you'd have to submit work to the Spectrum book. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of mm-hmm. how you get in there. And I, the last time I looked, it's about $25 per entry. And then you pick a category and submit it. Yeah, yeah. But it, I think... Like, they were so inspiring. Like, you saw all of these pieces that people had created, and you saw, like, all of these other artists that were, like, responding to it and, like, like rooting for each other and cheering for each other. And, like, there was just a sense of, like, everyone really wanted to see the people who were getting the awards succeed. And it was just, like, there was, like, so much of this just community encouragement. It was and- amazing. It felt like it, like the most motivating, inspiring experience. It was just, it's so incredible. Like <laughs> it, it was my favorite part of the whole event, besides from the socializing at the uh, the smoke bar at like one in the morning. <laughs> the award ceremony is my second favorite part. Uh, it was laugh. absolutely rewarding to for me to hear everybody's like acceptance speeches because nobody knew some of them had them prepared some of them didn't but to just kind of hear like an artist you know in in a in a giant room and hearing it kind of come from within from the heart and everything uh it was really good and even emotional at times for a lot of people in the auditorium it was it was just so fantastic to watch your peers like accept this level of kind of awards there was so much sincerity, like people yes. that had been working hard and then everyone was just there to like cheer each other on and just like, just you, the person that would get up on the stage and won the award was like just overflowing with joy. And then you could feel the people around you were also like joyful for them. And yeah, it just, there, there was no cattiness or bitterness to it, to, to anyone who didn't win or there was a nominee, nominee that didn't get it. Like there was none of that. It was just so, so nice and refreshing. Yeah. And, and it gives you this motivation. It gives you like, like this, you know, horizon of like, you know, keep working that there, there is value in what you're doing and there's recognition and people want to see you succeed and they want to see what you create and to, to recognize that. And, and yeah. everybody dressed up really nice for this. And I guess that's a common thing. <laughs> yeah. I kind of under undersold my, uh, my attire for that event just a little bit. I wasn't expecting it. So I, I had, I wanted to dress a little nicer, maybe next year. And then my travel buddy, who didn't even know that this was part, he came in like sandals and shorts, and you know the guys like next to us are in suits and ties and stuff. So it <laughs> it was it was a fun learning experience at the same time. I'm gonna have to bring a nicer outfit for next year. It was it was definitely fun to dress up and like you know look a little more ritzy than usual. But mm-hmm. it's, it's also cool because I feel like there's like this attitude of whatever, like the yeah. people that showed people, up and people were judging. Nobody cared. <laughs> like, We're a bunch of artists. So you you yeah. get all kinds of flavor in that type of crowd anyway. <laughs> so, yeah, it was really good. Uh, what did I miss upon? What would you do better? Is there anything else that we haven't mentioned that you'd like to do improve upon for next time in regards to yourself if you went to, to, to this convention? I think the, the signs was huge, and I think that not driving will be huge. Um the other thing I would say is learning to engage people better. Mm. Um, I think that was one of my biggest things. I don't think I did terrible. Like I bad. wasn't like a hermit. I didn't like shut down and stop talking to people. But I did feel very awkward. Like people would come up to my booth and I wouldn't know what to say to them. Or someone would compliment me and I wouldn't know you how to be like, really good like, at taking compliments in even like, different <laughs> ways. It's yeah, it's weird. Um so I think that maybe a little more fine tuning of learning how social graces in that situation would go a long way. Um, and maybe just being less nervous next time, I think, would help with some of that. That'll, that'll come with repetition. Yeah. Oh, yeah. and bring a, uh, a card reader if you're selling. Oh, my God. Yes. <laughs> Tyler and I both neglected the card reader. We yeah. both figured yeah. it's not a big deal. It was last on the list of things to do, and it got left behind. And we lost many sales on friday to not having a card reader Mm -hmm. until koi saved us (laughs) yeah we we borrowed a friend's on the second day and made up the bulk of the sales on the damn thing uh Mm -hmm. so yeah it was totally different than my expectations bring (laughs) 
bring a card reader. Take take those card payments. Link them to your PayPal or your bank account, whatever you need to. At conventions, cash is not king. <laughs> People want you to take card. Like <laughs> yeah. Uh, so uh, would you say the risks were were worth worth the rewards? Absolutely. Um, I I lost I lost some money, but I still have a lot of prints and supplies that I had from the show that I had gotten for the show that I still could make back some of my costs that I've already spent the money for. So I still feel like I could still break even with the inventory I have left. And I feel like I gained so much. I, I think the greatest thing that I gained was I, I got such a sense of validation that what I was doing, people were responding to it, that there was value to it, that people valued it other than me. And I think because I focused so much on personal work over the last two years, I haven't done freelance jobs. I haven't done commissions. Pretty much everything I've done has just been my work. And to to put that out there and then get such positive feedback and such positive response, I felt like there were a lot of emotional themes that I tried to address in my work that people would respond to. And especially the people that would stop and talk to me about the work and ask questions. And we like, I felt like people were able to connect parts of their lives, their emotions, and their experiences with the, the, the thought that I had put into the piece of art. And that was huge. Like that, that connection um, to me, that that's like why you create art and to see that actually happening and feel that reciprocal um, communication with the art that made it worth everything to me. So, <laughs> and I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that because uh, I think it was very clear, uh, at least upon being at the show and walking around it. This is not like a very typical art kind of convention in a sense. You don't walk around and see hordes of fan art and people trying to sell other people's, you know, properties through the use of their own. Um, iterations of it something maybe like at an anime or a comic-con you would see lots of people doing star wars characters disney characters whatever whatever have you bat comic characters uh it's basically just like you said it's artists doing their own personal things and putting that out there and i and i noticed this right off the bat as well because i came and i, I haven't i don't have a huge body of personal work in the last few years i came with four uh, images that were client-based client-based fantasy work mm -hmm. uh and i came with two personal images and i had them all lined up and anybody that i had asked you know what do you like the best or what people responded to the most were in fact my two personal pieces and the client work was while competent on a technical scale and looked every bit uh you know in terms of quality the same with my personal stuff there was just that lack of narrative and that lack of, uh, like, I guess, a, almost like an artist soul that I would put into my own piece is that the client work just, it didn't have it for me and my and my stuff. It was, those those pieces of art well, were fun. They were nice to work. I gave them an honest effort. They were still, at the end of the day, just there to collect a paycheck versus a lot of, the bulk of the people there were just like yourselves in creating purely from the passion side of things. And there was your response and people were receptive to that so much more. Than, than the stuff that I brought. And that's my one of my biggest takeaways from this particular convention. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think that, like, like you're right to distinguish it from other conventions because I feel like at a Comic-Con or an Anime-Con, people go there looking for characters and IPs that they like. Um, but when people are going to something like Spectrum or a LuxCon, I feel like people are going there to connect with the art, like to mm -hmm. have an emotional response to the work and I, I read this interesting article um, like a day or two ago, and he was saying how important it was that when you when you create that art, like the, you are putting yourself into it. There's an emotional sincerity and emotional vulnerability that you're you're trying to put into your art. But there's also it has to be it can't be so personal to you that it someone else looking at it wouldn't connect with it, that it, it has to be universal or archetypal in a way that like someone coming to the piece isn't going to buy it because they feel like you have a strong emotional connection to it they're going to buy it because they have a strong emotional connection to it which means that they've they've connected their own emotions and experiences to what you've created and that the, the emotion of it is what's sincere and i feel like at spectrum 
or a Luxcon or things that are more geared towards the actual creative artistic skill side of things, you're going to get many more people that that's what they're interested in. And they're coming there to find those, those few pieces that they connect with, not, not just an IP that they like. So, yeah, that's, yeah. that's really good. That's a good takeaway from this. Well, everybody, we're about out of time today. Uh, I want to thank you, Jessica, for coming on and talking about this experience with me. Uh, it was, it was really cool. Yeah, it was great. I'm so glad we went. <laughs> yes, I am glad we went too. And, looking forward to Luxicon in six more months. So that's the other thing, guys. It's probably better to keep making an appearance <laughs> a few times to these things so you can build up a reputation and, you know, kind of like a social standing and, you know, familiarity with everybody else. If you just go to these things like once every three years, it'll be hard to be that familiar face. So I'm going to try to go to, you know, two to three a year for now and see if I could swing that and, yeah, make a lot of friends. <laughs> Right. Uh, these things are all about connections, I think, for artists that are going. I, just after it, um, you know, I I, I, con I was in contact with one of the people I'd met there and he's like offered me work. Hey, he goes, you know, I'm full. I'd like to pass you on some jobs if you if you're interested, you know, and, and that's exactly the case of the, you know, the value when you getting these things. If you get basically one job from going to one of these events, it pays the trip pays for itself. So yeah. that's that's the other thing to remember as well. It just takes one good job. And the whole trip will justify itself financially for you. But anyways, guys, thank you for watching and subscribe if you enjoyed it and uh, take care. So everyone, I'd like to thank you for your time and I hope you enjoyed it if you made it to the end. If you have any questions whatsoever about the trip, uh, feel free to leave it below and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. This video was just more of an informative based one so we could give... Uh, anyone that was ever kind of curious about this thing, a little bit more of an insight into kind of what goes into it and what the atmosphere and uh, maybe some of the business practices are like in this case. All right, but uh, take care. Thank you for watching my video. If you found it helpful, please leave me a like. If you want to help me out, please share it with your friends. I'm also on Facebook where I have a subscribe button where you can get newsletters and discount info. I'm also on Twitter where I update and post images almost regularly. If you want a chance to mingle and meet other like-minded uh, individuals such as yourself, join the Brush Sauce community. Free and open to anyone, of course, through the Google+. Plus. And finally, if you'd like to inquire about my mentorship program, head over to tyleredlinart.com, click on the mentorship tab, scroll through, read over some of the guidelines, and feel free to check out uh, several of my testimonial videos on my YouTube channel itself.